A lot of couples wonder what attracted us to each other. What are the factors astrologically that caused us to even notice each other? So I'm not doing the Vedic compatibility technique today, though that is really the best technique, I think, for compatibility. I'm looking at other factors between charts that I call attractor factors. The couple I'm talking about today, they've been together for eight years, and there is a 17-year age difference between them, though this time it's the woman being 17 years older than the man. However, he has a mature yoga, which means that he acts in such a way that he seems more mature than his age. I thought that was interesting. Okay, so now let's look at this couple's attractor factors, and we'll start with their similarities and their mirrors. He has Jupiter with the moon. She has Jupiter opposite the moon. They both have the moon in Leo in the nakshatra Maga. Also, they both have Jupiter as the Dharakarika or the spouse planet. And their Jupiters are on the same axis. His is in Leo, hers is in Aquarius, so they're opposite each other. And if we go to the Satamsha, the seventh divisional chart, which is a basic relationship chart, your sex life, and children, they both have the sun in the sign of Aquarius. And they both have Venus and Mercury in the sign of Capricorn. Now let's look at the conjunctions between their charts. Let's go back to the D1 and start there. His Mars at 14 degrees of Gemini is exactly conjunct her Saturn at 14 degrees of Gemini. Her Mars at 22 degrees of Capricorn is conjunct his Saturn at 19 degrees of Capricorn, so about three degrees difference. And we go back to the Satumsha, and what do we see? But his Mars is conjunct her Saturn in Virgo. Again, about three degrees difference between them. Then we go over to the Navamsha, the marriage chart, and her Saturn at 10 degrees of Aquarius is joined to his Mars at seven degrees of Aquarius. I think it's interesting that they have three different Mars-Saturn conjunctions between their charts. I'm not sure exactly what that means, except that they're able to do hard things. And which one of the things she told me is that they're both train drivers for the London Underground. Okay, so to the, back to the D1. His Rahu at four degrees of Aquarius is exactly conjunct her Jupiter at four degrees of Aquarius. And in the Satamsha, we see that her Rahu in Libra is exactly conjunct, well, within three degrees, his Jupiter in Libra. Now, the D9 has a very interesting or somewhat unusual, it doesn't happen that often, at least I haven't seen it happen a lot in compatibility charts, and that is that his Rahu at 9 degrees of Scorpio is conjunct her K2 at 8 degrees of Scorpio. And of course, her Rahu is at 8 degrees of Taurus, and his K2 is at 9 degrees of Scorpio. And we can see Jupiter is involved again with the Rahu K2 combination. So they're doing opposite things, at least in their relationship. So his experience, past life experience with creating financial stability is helping her to do that this lifetime. And then her past life experience with becoming emotionally secure is helping him to do that this lifetime. So they're helping each other on each other's spiritual path through their marriage. And then finally, the other thing they have in common is that the moon is his Atmakarika and the sun is her Atmakarika. The sun and the moon are considered to be the royal planets or the two lights. The sun lights the sky in the day and the moon lights the sky at night. I've done two other videos on this same topic if you want to see those. There are some very fascinating similarities between 
couples charts that I've been noticing. But I do want to reassure you, if you and your partner don't have these kinds of symmetries and conjunctions between your charts, it doesn't mean that you're not meant to be together, okay? I'm sure that the compatibility will be shown in other ways. If you like this, please hit like. And until next time, thank you for watching.